right, Tom Dad here on day two of the PGA Show. It's James Seekman, somebody we've worked together for a long time. Uh, we've probably got some similar <coughs> war stories and battle scars. Uh, we working we for do some have some battle <laughs> scars. We do. Um, I want to talk to you about, okay, National Teacher of the Year. Congrats. Thank you. Hell of an accomplishment. Well deserved. Young instructors, young players, parents who are watching their youth come up, see what you do, and you're in a, you're in a uh, specialization within the golf instruction industry. Um, how did you create that, and then how did you stay with that? Well, I'll, I'll say this. To, to be great at anything, you've got to be passionate. And so I was lucky enough just to kind of find my passion. And that when I was playing, um, it was kind of the one thing I didn't understand. I didn't understand why I was working hard and not getting value from the time that I was putting in. And uh, so, so, you know, I became a voracious learner, basically, and which all success will have to be, right? Continual mm. learning, continual growing. It doesn't matter if you're a coach or a player. You've got to wake up every day and try to get 1% better, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. So I just kind of went down this path, and I was lucky in the fact that I truly believe that I had, even though I'd been playing competitively since I was 10 and I'd played in college and I played five years as a pro and I taught for a year, I had no clue what, what you should do. You know, I, I, I knew what didn't work. And so, you know, I wiped the slate clean. I just started studying the world's greatest players. And I thought, well, since I don't know what to do, I'll just teach what they do. And so I didn't really have cognitive bias with regards to what mechanics were. I thought, literally, I'm going to just start over. You're going to well, start fresh. Wipe no, the sake clean. Well, I, and so one of the things I found was that the great Seve Ballesteros and Raymond Floyd and Corey Pavin, they didn't do anything like what was being taught or told mm. or talked about. And so I kind of just came up with my own thing. And it was God, that takes guts, though, it, man. it did take guts, man. The, the, that takes guts. Because so I can imagine the number of people when you came out with that, and it wasn't this traditional way of moving the wedge yeah, or the Keep putt. your head still. Keep yeah. your hands head. Lean on your left foot. Yeah, I was a pharaoh. You know, I, I got uh, a lot of sideways looks from the well-established pros. Like, what in the world is? Yeah. You know, it's like when you when you do anything unusual or gr- I don't want to say groundbreaking, but uh, off the norm, you're going to meet some resistance. Yeah. But I feel like, you know, because I saw it with my own eyes, and I it was not one small sample size. I had days of video of Seve. It was not one swing. I had hundreds of swings. And I saw Raymond Floyd, and I had video of that, and Pavin, and not, you know what? There's a ton of common, commonality among these great players. It, it helped me stay the course, you know, uh, weather the slings and arrows and just let them bounce off, because so, I knew deep down in my heart it was the right thing, at least for me. So, so why do we in this industry, and coaching, teaching, playing, why do we, why do we push for conformity versus... Yeah. Genius, really, yeah, because yeah, most yeah. geniuses yeah, are yeah. always breaking free of the hundred uh, percent. So I mean, I'm not to, I'm not going to disparage any other teacher and no, any no. names here, but uh, I, I saw a presentation the other day where it's like, okay, so here are all these players. The average is this, and this is what since this is the average, this is what you ought to be. I'm thinking, why are we measuring the average? Yeah, why not the outlier? Why not the super high performer? And, and see what they're doing different, mm. right? And so you're right. Uh, it's, it's just because it's easy and it's comfortable, and of course, people love to be comfortable, which is no way to be great, right? <coughs> so Unle- you, unless you're you're comfortable being uncomfortable, yeah. then that's a completely different. Well, oh, then you're then you've got power. Yeah, that's right. Because you're used to it. So when people are in the short game and people are training, they come into you. Nobody really comes to you happy. I mean. I say nobody's a big word, but most people come to you because I got an issue. I got a problem. Yeah. I got a problem. Help me. And I'm sure you hear the story. If I could only. Yes. I hate that. I know. I just absolutely hate that because everybody's got a tape that plays on their head. And I gave an LPGA player a uh, lesson here in Orlando just like two days ago. And it was just a constant, like, I'm, a, I'm an amazing ball striker. I'm gaining eight strokes a tournament. I, if only I could putt a little better. If only my bunker game was a little bit better. And, I, you know, and her, her. Because of the kind of the negative self-image, her goals were so low. She's like, I said, like, what's a great year for you? Well, tell me what a great year is. And it's like, well, if I made 200000 on tour, that would be an amazing year. I'm thinking, is that it? Mm. Is that what you're going to do? Mm. She just wanted to just be functional in the other areas, the short game. She just didn't want to be great. And so I found that to be a real problem. It's yeah, like, w- okay. where's the fire and the passion to, 
Because I have a, a feeling like if you're not doing something passionately every day, trying to get 1% better at something, whatever that is, I mean, I mean it has to be golf, then it's like you're cheating life, yeah. aren't you? I asked a guy the other day, a young aspiring tour player, and he's a great guy, smart, works in another industry, extremely successful, and he's got game. Mm -hmm. So he would played professionally for a while, left, and he's coming back with a little bit more wisdom. And I asked him, I said, <clears throat> he's got all these ideas. I said, what are the two or three things that you need to do every single day to get better? And it stumped him. Yeah, and that's not a good sign. No, but he, he's so analytical. Yeah. He came back and said, okay, I was able. Yeah, let me think about it. Let me think about it. And he came back and it came, but it was just like what you're talking about. It was like, I can achieve that if I do these things. Like, for him, it was so important to boil it down. But, but like, he didn't know his things. And he didn't know it. And that's a real problem. It is. And that's what we've worked on. And I'm like, you've got this opportunity to define what you want. So let's get these in place. When you're training young coaches, mm -hmm. you know, this industry is so, in any industry, baseball coaches now and basketball, it's all about self-promotion. It's all about the social media game. It's all about this other stuff. How do you balance that? Because, I mean. L listen, when, you, when you're, uh, you, you have to have a certain measure of that at some point. But competence needs to come first. Mm -hmm. Because if you're throwing that out there, too early then it's just then you just become this guy that's just like this a girl that's a snake oil salesman that, that's that's known for that i think you have to build your reputation first and that takes patience and the real problem with young people a lot of times is they're not patient enough to know that at some point if they do enough good there'll be a tipping point be, you know so, so the great kim venturi said to his father his father said to him it's like you know he's bragging about a 66 and how he beat i think it was uh uh Byron Nelson and this. he goes, listen, son, when, when, when you're good, you can tell everybody. But when you're really good, they'll tell you. Hmm. And at some point, you have to be patient and work hard and earn your stripes. And then at some point when they start telling you, hey, you know what, now maybe it's time to self-promote. But you've got to build a resume first, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You, you, you started this conversation off as we're getting close to wrapping up. I want to get you to your next thing. Is um, You're talking about passion. Mm -hmm. And I hear it a lot from across all sports people. I, I, I just want to find my passion. Patience required is required for passion. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And a lot of times, the passion finds you. you. You know, it's not necessarily like, oh, I'm gonna. It's like going to find a mate. You know, you know yeah. just hang in there. It, it'll, you know, if you got your eyes open, it'll happen. Yeah. Right. But it is important because in anything, you're gonna hit roadblocks and you're gonna have setbacks, and it's gonna be hard. And if you don't have that passion, then it's so easy to quit, right? Mm. And high performers don't quit. They just roll up their sleeves and they hang in there. And I think the passion serves kind of as the motivation to some extent to get over the, the obstacles that are coming. It's yeah. coming. It's hard, right? It doesn't yeah. matter if you're playing or coaching or, or working, working in a club or doing what. If you want to be great at it, it's going to be hard because uh, it's, if it was easy, then everybody would be doing it, right? Mm -hmm. So you got to be... You gotta have your eyes open, know what's coming, and just go. That's okay. You know, this is what I want in life, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be tougher in my problems. I always tell my players, hey, be tougher in your problems. Yeah. Everybody's got them. Yeah, I like that. Quit, quit whining, right? All right, last question. Easy, easy knock is people don't practice short game enough. Uh, I would say partially true, but I'd say they don't know what to practice That's or how right. to practice, and all of a sudden it's like, well, I'm, I'm gonna waste my time. At least I know what I'm doing up there in the, on the tee. I'll, I'll go work on my full swing with track man. And that, you know, but it, the, you got to have your points. I call it check your boxes. you got to know what your boxes are so that when you go out there, you check those four boxes. You go, I worked hard today. I got better. But people just don't know what to do. So, yeah. so they hit a few and they leave. Congrats on everything. Uh -huh. And go, go do this Facebook Live I'll, I'll do it. and kill it. We'll uh, see you I'll out on uh, tour soon. You got it. You got All it. Right. Thanks. Thanks, buddy.